So welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IAS in association with Bangalore IAS Academy and Nama KPSC. So in this particular video, we will be discussing about plastic waste and the pollution caused by such plastic waste. So we will briefly look into the different types of plastic that we have, the environmental effects caused by plastic pollution, plastic pollution itself, uh, what causes plastic pollution, then we'll move on to the different effects of plastic pollution on environment, on animals, as well as on humans. And what are the simple steps that can be taken to prevent plastic pollution. Finally, we'll move on to plastic trade, following which we'll briefly discuss about the plastic waste management rules, as well as what are bioplastics. Okay, so we'll first start with plastic. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that plastic is a synthetic or semi-synthetic organic polymer. Plastic is a synthetic or semi-synthetic organic polymer which is derived from petrochemicals that are malleable and therefore can be molded into solid objects. Due to their low cost, ease of manufacture, versatility, and, impervious, and imperviousness to water, plastics are used in a multitude of products and has, great, and has greatly replaced the use of wood, leather, metal, glass, or ceramic. It has actually revolutionized medicine with life-saving devices, made space travel possible, it has lightened our cars, jets, it has saved lives with helmets, incubators and also equipment for clean drinking water. This convenience of plastic however has also led to a throwaway culture giving rise to something known as single use plastics which account for 40% of the plastic produced every year. I'm pretty sure if you've been reading the news or if you have uh, reading the newspaper or if you've been listening to the news, you would have come across this particular term known as single-use plastic. So what do you mean by single-use plastic? Single-use plastic refers to disposable plastics which are intended to be used only once. They are nothing but disposable plastics which are intended to be used only once before they are thrown away or recycled such as your carry bags food packaging, bottles, straws, cups, etc. which will never ever be reused but ends up as waste. So you can see here most of what we have here in this left side image most of it will soon very soon end up over here as garbage and the problem with plastic is that as everybody knows plastic is not easily degradable. I am not saying plastic is not degradable. Plastic is not easily degradable and may take hundreds of years to naturally be degraded. That is the main problem when it comes to plastic. Next, we will briefly, very briefly look into the different types of plastic. Obviously, you have a variety of plastics. But what I am going to do is, I am going to simply classify plastic based on its origin, based on its structure and then based on heat resistance. Okay, so I'm going to classify plastic into three types. So first is based on origin. So based on origin, you can have natural plastic such as cellulose, which are obtained from plants and animals and can be used for making your cellotape. This is your natural cellulose. Similarly, you can also have synthetic plastic. So based on origin, it, it can be natural or synthetic. So synthetic ones are made by complex chemical processes in a factory or lab such as nylon, such as nylon. Then based on the structure, based on the structure, uh, we can actually classify plastic into many types as you can see over here in this particular image. So here that is based on the structure, uh, plastic has something known as, see I've uh, already mentioned earlier that plastic is nothing but a polymer. So a polymer is nothing but repetition of certain structures. So in plastics you will have monomers when these monomers repeats itself several times that is when you get a polymer. So based on the structure of monomers that is that their polymers are actually made from 
plastic can be classified into polyesters, polyethenes, polyurethenes, etc., etc., and etc. As you can see it over here in this particular image, we have several different types of plastic based on its structure. And based on the structure, its durability and its strength actually varies. Finally, we can classify plastic based on heat resistance into thermoplastics and thermosets. We can classify plastic based on heat resistance into thermoplastics and thermosets. So thermoplastics are plastics which soften when heated. When the temperature increases, they become soft. Thermosets are those plastics which don't soften when heated after molding. They have greater strength. Say for example, your polytetrafluoroethylene, which is used to make your, no, which is used as your non-stick coatings on utensils. Uh, your polyurethane, uh, which are used as insulating materials on buildings. They don't soften when heated because they are more resistant to that. So they don't change their structure very easily. I mean, they don't become malleable when heated very easily. Next, we'll look into the environmental effects and toxicity of plastic. Most plastics are durable. Actually, they are durable and they degrade very slowly as their chemical structure renders them resistant to many natural processes of degradation. Plastic in the form of microplastics is also entering the food chain and the kind of damage it causes is yet to be understood. We have not fully understood the harmful effects of microplastics actually entering into the food web because microplastics are easily eaten by smaller animals and it goes up the food chain. And obviously due to this, humans are also consuming plastics every day. Apart from that, plastic also leads to, apart from that, plastic also leads to climate change because plastic is made from petrochemicals for which you will need crude oil. Burning of plastic also releases carbon into the atmosphere which once again leads to climate change. Apart from that, I did mention we will also be discussing about toxicity. Now, plastic use of continuous use of plastic can also result in toxicity. Pure plastics have low toxicity due to their insolubility in water and since they are biochemically inert. However, plastic products contain a variety of additives, contain a variety of additives which can be toxic. For example, take plasticizers. For example, take plasticizers. Now, plasticizers are additives which are added to plastic to reduce plasticity and make it more brittle. For example, your PVC, that is your polyvinyl chloride. I'm very sure if you've come across polyvinyl chloride, you can know that polyvinyl chloride is hard. It is brittle. This is nothing but plastic at the same time. So PVC contains plasticizers so that they can be made into toys or food packaging, etc. But the problem is that these additives which are added to improve the properties may actually leach out and they are said to be carcinogenic and also to interfere with hormonal functions. That is the main problem. Apart from that, there is one more toxic thing about uh, plastic and we refer it to as PPA or uh, bisphenol A. Bisphenol A. Now, if you take polycarbonates, which are generally used to make your uh, bottles, BPA is the building blocks of polycarbonate, which is an endocrine disruptor and is also said to cause heart diseases. Therefore, continuous use of plastic, say for example, for consuming food, for drinking water or toys, if you're continuously coming, to expo coming into exposure with plastic, due to the leaching out of various things, it may cause certain harmful effects. And the, and the thing is that we have not, we are yet to fully understand as to how plastic affects life, how, uh, uh, as to how plastics can result in diseases or harmful effects on organisms. Next, let us now move over to plastic pollution itself. 
plastic pollution is caused by the accumulation of plastic waste in the environment. This can be categorized into primary plastics such as your carry bags or bottles and also secondary plastics that is resulting from the degradation of primary ones which may range in size from microplastics to macroplastics. So you have primary plastics and then you have secondary plastics which are derived from primary plastics which will vary in size. The main problem with plastic is that it is non-biodegradable because it has combinations which are man-made and therefore unknown to nature. The enzymes and microorganisms responsible for breaking down organic matter don't recognize plastic as food. Hence, no natural method will break down plastic. So here you can see this particular uh, image over here as to how you have this chain of uh, carbon and various other uh, elements. Since the chain is very long, it becomes difficult for microorganisms to actually break them down. The, the ease at which matter or can, uh, can be broken down into simpler compounds like water or oxygen will also depend upon the structure of the matter. If the structure itself is very complex uh, and microorganisms are not used to such structures, it will not break them down easily. That is why plastics are very durable and they can remain inert, they can remain in the environment for hundreds and hundreds of years without easily breaking down because microorganisms which are used to breaking them down do not recognize this particular structure at all and hence they are not able to easily break them down. Now just because biodegradation is not possible that does not mean that photo degradation of plastic does not take place. Photo degradation of plastic actually does take place. So when exposed to sun over a long time, it breaks down into smaller and smaller fragments by exposure to the sun. Photo degradation continues to break down plastic to molecular level, but photo degraded plastic still remains a polymer. So even if they are broken down into smaller components, plastic still remains plastic itself. It is not converted to simpler compounds like carbon dioxide, oxygen or water which generally happens during biodegradation. Only the size is reducing but plastic still remains plastic. Therefore, photodegradation of plastic makes matter worse as it results in microscopic plastic. As it results in microscopic plastic which we refer to as microplastics which is invisible but still continues to pollute water and can enter food chain when eaten by marine organisms in the ocean. So photodegradation takes place but biodegradation is very difficult. Uh, this does not mean that plastic, as I said, as I've already mentioned earlier, this does not mean that plastic does not decompose. Due to its inherent molecular stability, it will take a very long time to decompose naturally, depending upon the molecular structure, but it will. Say, for example, take your foamed plastic cup. I'm pretty sure everybody would have had tea or coffee in these foamed tea or cups every now and then for 5 or 10 rupees without even thinking about the consequence. This formed plastic cup will take at least 50 years to decompose. It will at least take 50 years to decompose. Similarly, the plastic bottles that you, use, that you use, your beverages or your water drinking bottle, they will take as long as 400 years to decompose. They will take around 400 years to decompose. So this is the problem when it comes to plastic. The problem is that since it cannot be degraded easily, it starts to accumulate over a period of time and this, re this results in plastic pollution. So, uh, hence, uh, this has actually led to, uh, as I mentioned, has led to accumulation of uh, plastic as waste leading to plastic pollution, especially in our oceans. Uh, most of the plastic trash in the oceans actually originate from land which are carried by rivers into oceans. Once in the sea, most plastic will remain in the coastal waters. So uh, it is actually said that China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam, uh, these five countries 
alone dump more plastic in the sea than all other countries combined now once plastic is dumped into oceans if this plastic is caught in ocean currents if this plastic is caught in ocean currents this plastic can be transported all around the world say for example plastic from russia can be found on inhabited uninhabited islands along the pacific ocean that is possible plastic from india can be found in japan plastic from japan can be found in mexico that can be possible because ocean currents will carry plastic so this has actually resulted in the formation of two large garbage patches in the pacific ocean due to the accumulation due to the accumulation of plastic carried by ocean currents so what has happened over here is that in this image over here as you can see here two large garbage patches have formed up in the pacific ocean due to the gyres so all this ocean currents as it moves around in geography i'm pretty sure you'll read more about the circulation of ocean currents all these plastics are carried about and two large patches of garbages have actually been formed so if all so the, the problem is that there is so much of plastic in the ocean if you start collecting all the plastic then you should be able to form a new continent itself on the pacific ocean that much of plastic is floating around and these are further divided into tiny 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 particles so i'm not saying that if you go into the pacific ocean you'll have like an island of uh, garbage but there are tiny particles of garbage which may be difficult for us to see but there's a large garbage patch which has accumulated in the pacific ocean uh so now coming to that original question as to what causes plastic pollution the answer is that the main cause of plastic pollution is negligence the main answer is that the main cause is negligence plastic pollution comes mainly from household waste which is poorly recycled dumped in landfills and abandoned to be carried by wind and rain water where they finally end up in oceans where they will finally end up in oceans so it is nothing but our negligence in managing this waste that has led to this problem known as plastic pollution next let us briefly discuss about the plastic pollution effects the effects of plastic pollution first the effect of plastic pollution on environment now plastic debris actually represents chemical pollution in several ways as i've already mentioned they contain toxic compounds which can be ingested enter food chain and then bioaccumulate in organisms plastic bags that we always use can also affect crop growth in agricultural fields block natural water paths cause global warming block sunlight in water bodies and also disrupt the ecosystems functioning if you take plastic on land uh, actually more plastic is found on land than oceans chlorinated plastic on found on land can release harmful chemicals into the surrounding soil which can seep into underground water so uh, uh, if you take tap water which we always use for drinking 83% of tap water samples taken around the world contain plastic pollutants the most polluted tap water is found in usa followed by lebanon and india when i say polluted it in this in terms of plastic usa has the most polluted water and india ranks 3 so these are the effects on the environment as to how it affects water and soil and burning of plastic will also result in air pollution finally uh, sorry uh, next we have animals now animals is very simple as you can see in these two images over here many animals mistake plastic for food and they ingest or consume food in india i'm pretty sure you would have come across news where cows uh, when feeding on garbage they actually ingest plastic where this plastic blocks their intestine they are not because of which food is not able to move through the intestine and eventually they die and this is not restricted to cows it is it is taking place it occurs with birds with marine animals with animals on land with several other organisms where animals mistake plastic to be food and they end up consuming them and this results in disrupting their digestive system because of which they end finally end up dying similarly another problem is that 
there are too many things which are left out in ocean so you can see in this image over here as a turtle is now stuck or trapped in a ghost net because most of our fishermen if they don't need anything if they uh, don't want anything when they are out in the ocean they don't carry a dustbin or a waste bin along with them on a boat they will simply throw it in the water and all these animals get trapped and they also end up dying because of this and many other times all these plastic get ingested into their bodies which once again causes their death uh Finally, I'll just also briefly discuss about the effects of plastic on humans since we are the main cause of this particular pollution. So I've already mentioned earlier, uh, toxicity of plastic can lead to cancer, it can be also lead to birth defects, impaired immunity and various other health problems if we do not use plastic judiciously. So how can plastic pollution be prevented? The answer is very simple. We only have to take certain proactive measures or proactive steps. That is your three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, and also educate and generate awareness when it comes to using and disposing of garbage or plastic as to not throw plastic here and there, especially when going along highways, cutting across natural parks, as to how we have to manage and not throw plastic, which can cause harm not just to humans, but also innocent animals who mistake plastic for food. So over there, maybe you can just uh, pause the video and just read through it uh, once. That is reduce, reuse, recycle and educate. Next, we'll discuss about another big problem when it comes to plastic, that is plastic trade. Just like e-waste, plastic trade, uh, trade in e-waste, plastic trade is another big problem. Since exporting plastic waste is a convenient way for USA and other developed countries to count plastic waste as recycled, and avoid disposal costs and impacts at home, there is a significant increase of plastic waste shipments to other countries, especially China. So what I'm saying is, many of these big countries, they find it difficult to uh, recycle or many of these private contractors over in, in such countries find it difficult to recycle the amount of plastic because obviously if you go to US and many of these industrialized nations the use of plastic is much more because the concept of reuse because the concept of reuse is never known to them here at least in India we reuse things we use reuse things uh, the things which siblings use, older si elder siblings use will be used by younger siblings. But this concept of reuse is not there. With this Instagram, Facebook and YouTube culture, everybody wants new things and instantly all the other things previously bought are discarded. So there is a lot of plastic garbage which is generated in USA as well as many other developed countries and private contractors who are uh, required to deal recycle these uh, garb uh, 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 this plastic they do not do this instead they find it easier to ship them off to some other countries like china however in 2018 uh, china restricted the import of plastic waste and after which southeast asia has now become a major dumping yard so if you ever wonder why developed nations do not have a garbage problem, it's because many times their garbage problem is exported to and dumped in poorer countries like India, Bangladesh, Indonesia, China, etc, etc. So these garbage is dumped and also the other problem is that shipping of so much of garbage to poor nations will once again lead to consumption of more fossil fuel. So this plastic problem has become so serious as of today that it has prompted efforts to come up with a global treaty negotiated by the UN to manage plastic use and how plastic is actually dumped. However, uh, at the international level, uh, when it comes to marine pollution, we have the Marpol Convention. We have the Marpol Convention. So this is the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships developed by the International Marine Organization. This particular convention is developed by the International Marine Organization with an objective to minimize pollution 
of the oceans and seas including dumping oil and air pollution now under this convention there annex 5 of the convention actually deals with plastic so annex 5 of the convention requires a complete ban on dumping of plastic into ocean it requires a complete ban on dumping of plastic into oceans uh, now this is at the international level now coming to india in india the government has actually committed to completely phase out single use plastic by 2022 the central government has decided to completely phase out single use plastic by 2022 last year that is in 2019 by amending the hazardous waste rules the central government has prohibited and banned the import of solid waste however plastic is still being imported into india illegally what i had mentioned earlier plastic is actually being imported into india illegally so here you can see this image on the left hand side so what happened in 2019 that is the same year last year in august 2019 we had banned uh, the import of plastic but the same year 38 containers from usa which were supposed to be carrying paper the containers 38 containers from usa were supposed to be carrying paper for recycling was actually carrying hazardous and plastic waste to indonesia however this was prevented in indonesia and indonesia rather than sending it back to usa started to send these containers to many different nations as you can see in this image over here these containers were sent to many other nations one such container was also shipped to india where last year this plastic waste from usa one of the containers came to india and all that garbage was dumped waste was dumped in it was not paper it was not simply plastic it also had hazardous waste the same year that is 2019 55,000 metric tons of plastic waste was imported to india from pakistan and bangladesh alone in the name of recycling now of course plastic can be recycled and can be used but the problem is that hazardous waste are also being imported to india in the name of recycling and they are simply dumped in some landfill and they are abandoned and never to be uh, treated or processed and many poor families women children and also men uh, 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 scavenge through these plastic for things and this can also lead to harmful effects on their lives so since we are discussing about india how are we dealing with this plastic now the government has actually come out with plastic waste management rules this provides for scientific plastic waste management in India. So what I want you to do is that I want you to Google plastic waste management rules. I want you to go through the plastic waste management rules. In 2018, there was an amendment to plastic waste management rules. I want you to understand what are these plastic waste management rules. Uh, I will just briefly mention a few important points about plastic waste management rules, but there are still more things to it. Please do read through it. Apart from that, many states have also introduced a ban. Say, for example, if you take Karnataka, Karnataka, especially in Bangalore, we have banned the use of plastic. If you go to Madikeri, we have banned the use of plastic. So, uh, yeah, in Madikeri, the use of plastic carry bags of even thicker microns is actually not allowed as such. So, the, there are certain measures which are taken by the central government and state government. So, please do go through them. Please read your newspaper so that you are... Uh, 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 in track when it comes to your current affairs so i'll just briefly mention some of the important points of the plastic waste management rules now according to these rules the thickness of the plastic bags have to be 50 microns uh, to facilitate recycling of the plastic waste uh, uh, carry bags have to be at least 50 microns uh, extended producers responsibility which we discussed in the previous video that is also introduced over here in plastic waste management rules so there is responsibility on the producers and generators of plastic in waste collection and management of plastic uh, plastic producers generators and importers of plastic are required to register themselves even vendors who make use of plastic bags are required to register themselves with the uh, state authorities uh, this particular waste rules is not 
limited only to the urban areas but also extends to rural areas uh, the plastic waste management tools also promotes the use of plastic for road construction and persons who are organizing large events like marriages or any other function are also required to be responsible for the, the, the plastic which is actually disposed of. Finally, in 2018, the amendment which was introduced actually required the phasing out of multi-layered plastic. It actually required the phasing out of multi-layered plastic which are non-recyclable, non-energy recoverable and have no alternate use. So these are the uh, various important rules under plastic waste management rules. Next, we have something known as bioplastics. Now, bioplastics are plastic materials which are produced from renewable biomass sources such as vegetable fats and oils, corn starch, agricultural byproducts and food waste. However, bioplastics are not always biodegradable nor do they biodegrade more rapidly than fossil fuel derived plastics. So I want to understand here, the main difference between bioplastic and plastic is that the source material or the feed material which is used to make plastic is different. So, when it comes to bioplastic, fossil fuels are not used. The or uh, the uh, the feed material or the uh, uh, what do you call as the uh, ingredients for making plastic is uh, renewable in nature. So this is why many actually consider that bioplastics are carbon neutral when compared to plastics. But that does not mean that bioplastics are very easily degradable. To be considered to be degradable, matter has to be degradable in a few weeks to a few months. But bioplastics again will take a very very long time depending upon the structure and durability to degrade. It is not that bioplastic will, if you just put it, dig a hole and put it inside the ground, uh, it will degrade in a few weeks or a few months to come or in a year. It will once again take several years. The only benefit is that it reduces carbon footprint. It is not toxic when compared to your conventional plastic since it does not contain your bisphenol A and it also saves energy but is not a ready alternative to plastics. It is a better alternative but not a green alternative to plastics. This is known as bioplastics. Next, maybe uh, every time you would have come across many uh, articles or information saying that many uh, research is being carried on to see if microorganisms are able to degrade and break down plastic. So as of now there is no considerable uh, push, uh, sorry there is a push to actually come out with microorganisms if possible by genetically engineering them but there has not been much success when these microorganisms are able to readily break down plastic. There are few microorganisms which are able to break down plastic but it will once again depend upon the structure of the polymer and it and it may not be universal but still a lot of research is going on to see that if microorganisms can are there any remote microorganisms which we have not yet discovered or if it is possible for, possible for us to genetically engineer microorganisms where these bacteria can break down plastic as well but um, at least until now there is no substantial progress which has been made in this direction so as of now until we discover a better alternative to plastic as of which which does not seem to be the case and also until we find a way to degrade plastic the best option for us is nothing but reuse reduce recycle and educate that is our best option to prevent and control plastic pollution which has now turned up into a disaster so I hope you've had some better understanding and also more understanding when it comes to plastic waste and plastic pollution. Uh, if you do have any doubts, please do write to us in the comment section and also follow us for further such videos. Thank you very much.